You want? Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. My, my mic's working, so <laughs> I'll do it. Good evening and welcome to this informal uh, worship service this evening. What a joy it is to start our Thanksgiving uh, weekend in worship and rejoicing, and we are glad that you are here as we gather together this evening. Um, our, the service is informal and it's interactive. A little later on, there's an activity that we'll do together as we celebrate that for which we are thankful. And we'll begin interactively with our call to worship. Uh, so hopefully you picked up a bulletin in the back and you'll find it printed, I will be the leader if you will be the people. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. When I saw you. Look upon God's countenance and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. Sisters and brothers, let us worship our God. I want to encourage you to join us in our prayer of thanksgiving this evening. It's printed in our bulletin today. We come laden with the bounty of your benevolence. And so now is a great opportunity for us. Let us rise and greet each other. We'll see some folks we haven't seen in a while, and it's just great to be together as we celebrate this beautiful evening.
It truly is a joy to be together this evening, and as, um, as we reflect on that for which we are thankful, we will turn first to the word of the Lord. Um, our Old Testament passage uh, from Psalm 69, listen for the word of the Lord. I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an ox, more than a bull with its horns and hooves. The poor will see and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts live. The Lord hears the needy and does not despise his captive people. Let heaven and earth praise him and seas and all that move in them. For God will save Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. Then people will settle there and possess it. The children of his servants will inherit it, and those who love his name will dwell there. And our New Testament passage this evening comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Listen again for the word of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as we gather this evening and we're preparing for um, tomorrow, I'm sure that many of you have had a busy day. Um, If you're hosting tomorrow, if you're cooking, you may have been prepping your meal or preparing your home and cleaning up. And just a few hours ago, I was doing that very thing. Um, My job on Thanksgiving for the last number of years has been to cook the turkey. Um, And I volunteer for that job willingly because I get to sit outside, I cook it on the grill. Um, It's a great afternoon and I spend the whole day before prepping, brining, chopping onions, lemons, all of that stuff. And every year when I come to the service, I can still <laughs> got the, the garlic and the, and the lemons and the, and the onions and um, that smell always reminds me of, of this evening and this is one of my favorite services of the year as we enter this holiday with rejoicing and worship. And I don't know if you know this, but our scent, our sense of smell is the most strongly connected to your sense of, to your memory. That um, hearing things and seeing things and even, even Feeling things sometimes will recall memories and emotions, but a smell has a power to bring back with full force and place you right back in that moment with the flood of emotions and the feelings that you felt in that time when you smelt it. So today as I was was chopping my onions, I was thinking back to past Thanksgivings. Thanksgivings as a child uh, with the big family dinner in my grandmother's house, and I could smell the onions and the lemon and the, the bay leaves, and I could smell um, that smell of a grandmother's uh, apron with the flour on it because she's been preparing pies and that hug when you come in. I was remembering a Thanksgiving as a teenager, um, my first Thanksgiving after I got my license. So I had my driver's license for about a month, and I got my first speeding ticket on Thanksgiving Eve, and I was, um, so I was sinful in speeding, but I did the honorable thing and I came home and told my parents that night, I didn't wait until after Thanksgiving. Um, I didn't wanna uh, try and hide it and make more trouble for myself. And um, a few years later, uh, ironically enough on Thanksgiving Eve, as I was driving north to New Jersey with Amy and Marissa, um, the Maryland State Trooper uh, helped me relive that memory once again as I got a second speeding ticket. I've only gotten two speeding tickets in my life, um, both of them on Thanksgiving Eve. I was recalling the Thanksgiving Eve when I first arrived here in Virginia in 2004. Um, I flew out of Great Lakes, Chicago. I left boot camp on Thanksgiving Eve and flew into Norfolk and ate Thanksgiving dinner that that Thursday in the galley at NAS Oceana with a bunch of other fresh young recruits right off the plane. As I smell onions, I think about joyful experiences. I think about this place and the times of cooking chili with the youth and Jim and Jackson can attest to this, that that onion smell will stick with you for more than just a weekend, for weeks on end, smelling these onions. But these memories of joy and celebration come back. But also as I was chopping onions and and a few of the tears start to, to well up, 
I remember Thanksgivings of, of more challenging times, of, of sorrowful memories. Um, the Thanksgiving Eve when I received a phone call that um, was devastating. Or that first Thanksgiving when that chair that was normally full, that normally had somebody in it, was empty that year. And these, these memories of Thanksgiving, but whether they're good memories or challenging memories, speeding tickets or um, loss of loved ones, in all of them, this is a season for us to, to consider that for which we are thankful, to give thanks to the Lord and to rejoice, whether it's a season of sorrow and mourning or a season of celebration and joy. So today, Paul's words to us, I'm gonna read it for us again. As I was chopping these onions, these words, I was just repeating them over and over again in my mind. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. And as I was chopping, I paused there. Let your gentleness be evident to all. And I laughed for a moment and I thought, um, when, I, when I go out this evening, it will be evident to all that I was preparing for Thanksgiving if they sit close enough and smell the garlic and the onion on my hands. And so this evening, as we consider for that for which we are thankful, I also encourage you to let the aroma of your gentleness, of your worship, of your praise, of your thanksgiving to the Lord be evident to all. Like the aromas of a Thanksgiving meal that fill our homes in this weekend, let us live in such a way today and tomorrow and, and choose to go out so that our joy and our rejoicing is evident to all. I don't know what season each of us are in tonight as we gather, but I know for sure um, if we flip on the news, we know what happened in Chesapeake um, just this week. And I think about those families and, and what the table will look like for them and, and the Thanksgivings going forward in this the sobering, challenging, sorrowful reminder of the loss of life in this shooting that happened. And I think about the smell of the church, that oniony smell, and that call that we have in those seasons, in those situations, and in those lives, to let our rejoicing, to let our praise, to let our thanksgiving be evident to all, even those in the midst of sorrow. So this evening, in a few moments, after we, um, after we hear the choir sing an anthem, Jim's going to lead us in an activity, in a reflection of thanksgiving, where we will list those things in our lives, those people for whom we are thankful, the, the blessings that we have. And as we list those things, I encourage you to be mindful of them, and then to go forth this evening with the smell of raw onion of rejoicing, fresh on your clothes, fresh on your hands, and to let that be a gift of joy to the world. Let us continue to worship our Lord.
Beautiful, beautiful. Thanks so much. So, as Joel said, we're going to engage in a little exercise today, and uh, we've done this before. If you've been with us, we're going to add one little piece to it tonight. Uh, an opportunity for us to be able to reflect on three things of the bounty of things uh, for which we are grateful. And I would encourage you to, uh, to use a sheet of paper and to uh, and just to write your simple three things I did mine uh, while Joel was talking and uh, what a beautiful word he gave us. Uh, so, uh, so when you do that, uh, I want you to ask you to do uh, one of two things. Um, you can keep it if you want to, um, but if you'd like, which we would like for you to do, is uh, when we are singing our hymn, we're going to be seated for the hymn, just come on up and place it somewhere on the table and just uh, make it an offering of thanksgiving to our God. And as Joel mentioned so beautifully, we remember uh, so many folks in this season now, and we think about those who lost loved ones in Chesapeake, at Walmart, and throughout our world, uh, so many people who come to, to evenings of Thanksgiving and, and feel as if there's nothing for them to be able to say, uh, to be able to, to feel. It's just numb. And so I'd like to ask you on the back, um, you have a front that has all the, you know, the nice design, and on the back, I'd like you to offer just one word, um, make it one word, one word if you could say to someone sitting in a Walmart parking lot or wherever it may be, one word that uh, you could say to them in the midst of their loss, what would that be? And let's bring our thanksgiving and our desires to be able to be hope for this world together. So we'll give you uh, a couple of minutes as we as we sing, and we're, we're gonna uh, we're gonna stay seated for our singing of the hymn of Thanksgiving. Uh, you can sing along if you've done it. If you're working, just kind of jump in as you feel called, and our choir is gonna lead us. And so we're gonna do that now.
us pray and we will end with the Lord's Prayer. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for your love and grace. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the warmth of the family here gathered. And we thank you for the gift of your son. Lord Jesus, we give you all glory, light, and honor. We thank you for, for your love, your life, your death, your resurrection, your promise to come again. We thank you that for all that you've done for us, Lord Jesus, you have made us thankful. And so we pray your spirit would come and rest upon us and rest upon this world. That our thanksgiving would be something, Lord, that would shape our living today, our living tomorrow, and our living into all the tomorrows that come. That we would be first and foremost a thankful people so that that thanksgiving might imbue everything that we do and all that we think. We pray all of this as we gather and we remember the blessings of families that we have, the family we experience now. And we pray especially tonight for those who feel as if they're lost and alone and afraid. And we pray, Lord, you would draw them, draw them to us and draw us to them. It's in your beautiful and powerful name that we pray, and it is in your name that we make bold and say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. So here's the thing, um, these words that Paul writes, uh, he's writing from prison. So this joyful exhortation and encouragement to rejoice, he says it again, to rejoice, to let your gentleness be evident to all, to pray, to present with thanksgiving your prayers to God. Um, he's imprisoned as he writes these. 
uh, things aren't going so well. It's not a, a mountaintop moment, we would say, um, for Paul. And he continues on and he says this, just following. He says, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And that is the call for us as, as Jesus people, as we seek to grow in Christ-likeness and to be the hands and feet of Jesus in this world, that as we focus on these things, we get stinky. The church starts to smell, like that smell of onions, our rejoicing and our praise just exudes forth. So I encourage you this Thanksgiving season to be smelly people, to be smelly with the stink of joy and rejoicing and praise and thanksgiving as you go out into the world, and to be that light and hope for those who so desperately need to experience it in this season and beyond. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.